Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. What's the most amount of viewers you've ever had? I think we had about 300 at one point. Uh, and I suppose there's a theoretical limit to how many viewers can watch me at one time. Well, I suppose the, as many people are in this world. And there is an actual limit to the amount of machines that can be connected to the internet at one point in time. And this is not necessarily, well, it was by design initially, because who would have ever thought that we would need this many IP addresses? And we've talked about IP addresses on the show before, and this would be a uh, um, an address that each device or machine or anything that's connected to the internet is assigned. So you're connected to the internet, you have an IP address, and that's completely different from my IP address. It's not so much of an issue until, of course, we run out of IP addresses to assign, at which point the internet basically implodes and then we all go home. Uh, well, this is a big problem as you know more and more of us have not just one device that's connected to the internet, but multiple devices. Think about how many devices uh, or computers that you have inside your home that are connected to the internet, and let's say they're not all going through the same uh, access point, and then they're all assigned different IP addresses. Well, again, we're talking about a very limited pool, and unfortunately, we've, we've we're not real close to that limit. But before we actually hit that limit, it's good to be able to think ahead, and that's exactly what they have been doing. The infamous they, uh, they figured out well. Uh, so this is this is what we have with IPv4. Uh, we have this string of numbers that's associated with a machine, and we can do this much. We can set, we've got 32 bits to play with within this particular address. Well, let's see if we can do it differently, do it better, wrap in some more security, um, do things a little differently, but still maintain some amount of um, compatibility with IPv4, although not directly. So basically, what I'm saying is we're in the transition mode of going from IP addresses that we know that would be uh, a certain string of numbers that look the same like, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 192.168.1.1. So a set of numbers, set of numbers, set of numbers, set of numbers separated by dots. Uh, so I realize it's a super untechnical way of explaining it, but that's the, the easiest way to explain it. Uh, you've got basically 32 bits uh, to play with in that space, uh, that specific address space, and with the next generation, or IPNG, IP next generation, also known as IPv6, you have 128 bits to play with in that particular address space. So there's a lot more information that can be sent, uh, transmitted back and forth, and assigned specifically to different types of devices. There's a lot more that we can play with, not just in the range that can be accessed or used or addressed, but, I mean, because IPv4 versus <laughs> IPv6 is just completely off the charts. I'm sure we'll hit that at some point, but then at that point, then we'll have IPv7, IPv8, uh, and then pretty soon they'll just start sucking, just like every uh, movie franchise that tries to go anywhere beyond three. Um, anyway, uh, and I suppose maybe some people would argue that Harry Potter has already jumped the IPv6. Who knows? Anyway, uh, that's the idea behind IPv6, as someone, Jalen Jade, was asking what it is and, well, more specifically, how it will it impact you. And I don't think the impact is really going to be felt by the average person. That's the great thing. Uh, software, since IPv6 is almost, this may not be an accurate word, but it's not compatible with exactly, precisely, but it's actually a subset of IPv4. So a lot of the software that you use is used to translating and working within IPv4 networks and, and that kind uh, of construct. Um, just the software, internet software, may need to be recompiled just to support uh, the IPv6. And in many cases, the software they're using either has been recompiled or is not going to have an issue on an IPv6 network because there's so much sideways compatibility during this transition time. It's, it's just, it's not going to be an issue. That's the great thing. Uh, it's not going to be a headache for consumers. Consumers aren't going to have to think about this. So just know that it's coming and it's a good thing and it's not going to cost you anything more. Uh, it's just going to work because the people who make the software have to worry about it, not you. That's the beautiful thing about it. That's IPv6, at least the easiest way I can explain it without getting overly technical. If you have an easier way of explaining it without getting overly technical, by all means, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for help to be able to explain this to people because, you know, I'm not a ne network god or a B-O-F-H, if you will, uh, but I, I do know enough to know that I, I'm 
I'm accurate in telling you you don't have to worry about it. So anyway, uh, to make a, a long story longer, I'm going to cut it off here. Leave a message, follow up response, any other tips or tricks related to anything you might know about IPv6. I don't know if you have any tips or tricks about it, but if you do, great, leave them. I don't care. Actually, I do care. And the next time you have an opportunity, maybe uh, five minutes at the end of your day, I'm looking at my invisible watch. It's telling me that it's about time you stop by our chat room and started interacting at live.perillo.com.